Alhamdulillah, wassalam, wassalam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to another session of our series, Stories of the Prophets, alayhi salam, uh, Stories of the Prophets. And uh, as you guys know, I'm giving you the stories of different prophets, but I'm basing it strictly on what is told about them from the Quran or the authentic Hadith books. And today's story is a prophet that I've never heard of before because I was born and raised upon Islam. And but this the little bit that I've read about him from these hadiths I'm going to use there's only several hadiths. It made me fall in love with him. It's weird. I've been floating around like I'm in love with somebody. You know, y'all know I love Moses. Okay? Moses got a little competition now. When I get to paradise inshallah if I make it there. I might want Daniel now. This prophet's name is Daniel. And when I tell, go over the story of Daniel, you can see why he's touched my heart in a butterfly flutter type of way. So let's put the um, PowerPoint up. It's not going to be long uh, because, like I said, there's not much mention. And before I go over his story, let me remind you guys. A lot of Muslims, especially the new converts, may, may say, Sister Layla, you know, you taught us that Allah sent over 124,000 prophets. Why come he only doesn't mention Daniel in the Quran? Why is it he doesn't mention a Jeremiah in the Quran? Why is it that these names are not mentioned in the Quran? Well, number one, it shows you why you need to learn the Sunnah. Because Islam is based on two sources of information, the book of Allah, which is the Quran and the things that the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, which is through the hadith. So just learning the Quran, you're going to be tip sided. That's why the prophet said you will never understand the Quran until you learn the hadith too. Okay. So that's why, and also the number one reason why Daniel is not mentioned in other prophets is because Allah himself tells us the prophets that he mentioned by name in the Quran were the best of them all. So Daniel was a prophet, but he wasn't better than Solomon. He wasn't better than Adam. He wasn't better than the other ones. So that's why Allah is not mentioned. Remember, Allah says that even the prophets are closer to him based on status. Well, David is at the bottom compared to the ones at the, that's at the top that he mentions in the Quran. And even of the ones mentioned in the Quran, the best of them were the messengers, Noah, Abraham. Moses, Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad. Those were the five best of them all. So out of all the prophets that Allah sent, none of them out tops Abraham, Moses, Noah, Jesus, and the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But this is why you're not going to read about um, uh, uh, Daniel in the Quran, because he's not of that higher status. But the Hadith speaks about him. It's not that much, but I researched it for Bethany and found it because I had never, she had asked me about a Daniel. I said, I ain't never heard of nobody named Daniel, girl. Ain't no prophet named Daniel. You know my own, but now I see there is. So today or tonight, we're going to review what we have knowledge of based on Quran and Sunnah of, the, of Daniel and his story. Well, this is what we found. It starts off, Ibn uh, Abu al-Dunya, he narrated the following to us in the hadith about Daniel. And what he what is narrated from him is based on uh, 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 Sahih uh, narrations. He tells us 
that there was a king, that king named ne Nebuchadnezzar, how you pronounced it? This king captured two lions and he threw them into a pit. He then brought Daniel and threw him at the lions, hoping that the lions would kill him, but they didn't. Instead, he was thrown into the pit and the lions just sat down. They didn't touch him at all. And then when Daniel wanted to eat and to drink because this uh, a king who was uh, oppressing the Hebrews, I guess, you know, uh, was going to starve him and not feed him. He was hoping that the lions would uh, uh, kill him and he wasn't going to give him no food or drink. But Allah sent the revelation to another prophet who I didn't know about either. And we're going to talk about him next week. His name was Jeremiah. Remember, we talked about how just like sometimes the law sent more than one prophet at the same time. They went to different parts of the world, just like Abraham and Lot were together at the same time. Moses and Aaron. Well, in this case, uh, and also Zachariah. Well, in this case, uh, uh, Daniel was a prophet. And so was another man named Jeremiah. I'm a, you know, I don't know about him either, but I'm going to tell you about him next week. I'm going to research him. Allah sent a revelation to Jeremiah, who was in Palestine. And he told him, I want you to prepare some food and some drink and take it to Daniel. And this prophet Jeremiah said, oh, Allah, I am in Jerusalem. Daniel is in Babylon. For those of you who don't know, Babylon is in Iraq. So he said, I'm in Jerusalem. Daniel's in Iraq. How can I take him some food? And that's when Allah said, again, do what I've commanded you to do, and I shall send you and a person with you who will carry you to where you need to go. So in other words, that's what happened. Uh, uh, Allah sent an angel who took Jeremiah from Jerusalem and carried him to Babylon which is in Iraq, so that he could take food to Daniel. And he, uh, the angel took Jeremiah to the pit, to the brink of the pit where Daniel was capped at. And when Daniel looked up and saw him, he said, who's there looking down at me? And Jeremiah said, I am Jeremiah. And Daniel said, what do you have in your hands? He said, my Lord sent me to bring you food. And Daniel said, Allah has remembered me. And uh, um, uh, Daniel said, yes. I mean, um, Jeremiah said, yes. And then Daniel said, praise be to Allah who has never forgotten me. And praise be to Allah who never forgets those who call to him for help. Praise be to Allah who compensates good with good. And praise be to Allah who rewards patience with safety who dispels harm after distress and who assures us when we are overpowered that hope is always there. And this is why as Muslims guys, again, Allah shared the story of this prophet with uh, our prophet Muhammad. It's not in the Quran, but what happened was the Jews, when they came to test the prophet Muhammad to see if he was a real messenger of Allah, they told him, if you a prophet, tell us about Daniel. And that's why this story, the prophet shared with them what Allah revealed to him about Daniel. And you learn from this story to have hope. Here, a prophet was put in a pit with Two lions with no food, no water. Did he kill himself? No. He called upon Allah for help. And like we're learning in the tall heat class, whenever you uh, show through your actions and your tongue that you truly believe in Allah, Allah becomes your hands, your eyes with which to see. And Allah will perform miracles for you like he did. He caused this an angel to bring Jeremiah, who was another prophet, to him with food. 
And Daniel thanked Allah for not abandoning him. Subhanallah, Allah, beautiful lesson. And also, this companion goes on to tell us that that's not all we have about the story of um, uh, Daniel. When, during the caliphate, guys, of Umar, when the Muslims were fighting against the Persians and they defeated them, when Testar was invaded, the Muslims found treasure in the house of El Harmazan, which was one of the rulers. And they saw in that house a bed that held a dead man. Now, you know, back then the Persians you know, they, they were Magians. They were not believers in Christianity or any of that. They were, they were fire worshipers. And when a person that was righteous died, they didn't bury them in the ground. They would make, decorate them in beautiful clothing and then lay them out on a, 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 a bed you know, with the fire burning around them and just keep them there. They would keep them in this shrine, you know, not buried on the ground, but in a, 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 a house with the fire burning around them. Well, when the Muslims fought against the Persians and defeated Harmazan, okay, they, uh, the companions went in there and they found a bed in this treasury. They found all this gold and money in their treasure house and a dead man laying in a bed with a, a, one of the scriptures uh, on, at his bed, on at his bedside. So they were like, who is this dead man? And by the way, the man looked like he was, uh, had not even died. The man was totally intact. His skin was there, his facial features, his hands, and he was holding a book a holy book. And you guys know why. Remember the prophet Muhammad taught us that when a prophet dies, their body doesn't disintegrate. Their body stays like right now, if we were to dig up the prophet Muhammad's grave, his body would, would still be as if he were alive because Allah doesn't allow the body of a prophet, you know, to disintegrate back to the earth. Because uh, that's just not how Allah has it. So this man, you know, was just laying there. And so the companions went and took this book out of his hand. And they said, what is this? Because it was written in a language that they didn't know. So they went back to Medina and they took the book and gave it to Umar, who was the caliph. And Umar said, what is this? They said, this is what we found, th this dead man lying in the bed holding on to. So Umar called for Cobb, and I think my cousin Mukhtar gave our story of Cobb. Cobb was one of the companions. He said, Cobb, I want you to come here. Translate what this book has into Arabic. So Cobb read the book and he translated it into Arabic. And uh, uh, Abu Alia said, I was the first Arab to read what he had translated. He said, and I read it, I could read it easily, just like I could read the Quran easily, okay? And so uh, what the book contained was, it was a scripture. It was a book about life, animals, I mean, uh, life and songs and speech, okay? So it was a book of scriptures, of a, a scriptures that came before the Quran. And the companion that was telling us this was asked, well, what did happen to the man that y'all found? He said, the man that we found dead in that bed, we dug, uh, we, we dug a grave for him in the riverbank and we buried him and we leveled all the other graves so that no one could find and tamper with him. He said, and the reason that we did that was to protect him. Because Umar told us after we had translated that book into Arabic, Umar said, this is Daniel, who he heard the prophet speak about, okay? And he had been dead for centuries. But again, uh, nothing had changed about his body except um, some of the hair on his face 
and some of the uh, his beard and mustache had fallen out, but the skin of him remained the same. So it was uh, Umar who ordered them to bury his body somewhere where no one could find it because he was a prophet. Okay, so this is what we have uh, from the companions on David. Okay, and also Anas ibn Malik. Anas ibn Malik also said that uh, uh, the original, some of the, the companions that, fought, that found him thought he had been dead for just 300 years. But of course, it was longer than that because there was no profit between Jesus and, Mo and Muhammad. The prophet Muhammad said that there was no prophet that came between him. And also the man had a long nose. In fact, his nose was two feet long. And that's how they knew that the, the time was way before Jesus. Because back in those years, years humans were taller than they are now. So this man was taller and his nose was nine inches long, nine inches long, which, and they said, so that's how they knew that he was from the ancient times. You know, back in those days, uh, they measured uh, by a person's uh, nose length and arms length because humans used to be tall. And as time go on, we get shorter and shorter. So his nose was nine inches. So that's how they knew that he was way before Jesus, way before the prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, more another hadith that was narrated from Abu Musa. Abu Musa found, he was the one who found the body of David and found, he was with the companions when that found Daniel's body, and they also found the book that was with it. And not only did they find the book, but also uh, money, his ring, and some oil. And it was Abu Musa who wrote the letter to Umar saying, we found this man. And uh, Umar told him to send the scripture to us and send the oil to us too. And tell the Muslims who are with you that they can use some of the oil and share the money with them too. And you can keep his ring. So that's what they all found. It was Abu Musa Shari. This is Abu Musa Shari. Okay. And uh, Moses, I mean, um, Umar told Abu Musa Shari that this had to be Daniel. He said, because I remember the prophet speaking about him. He said, so stay with him. And don't let the people get to him and bury him in secret. So Abu Musa Shari said that he stayed with uh, the dead man. And when he was told by Umar he was a prophet, he embraced him and he kissed him. And then uh, he buried him in a grave that they kept secret. You know, and they sent uh, part of the money to the Muslim uh, treasury and the other part you know, they share with the men in the army and Abu Musa Shari kept the ring himself. Okay. So these are the hadiths that we have on Daniel. And a lot of people ask about the ring. Well, there's also a hadith that tells how the ring looked. Okay. Uh, the ring. The ring had a gem in the middle of it. And the gem was carved with two lions. And between those two lions was a man. And they sat between the man licking his cheeks. And Abu Barda tells us, he said, this is the ring of the man whom the people of the town said is Daniel. Abu Musa took it the day he buried him. And they were told that uh, uh, the king in Daniel's time uh, was told that a boy would be born who would destroy him and his kingdom. So the king swore to kill all baby boys, but they threw Daniel into the lion's den and the lions began to lick him and did not harm him. So Daniel carved his image and the image of the two lions into the stone of his ring. So as he would never forget 
the blessing of Allah upon him. And this is narrated through an authentic chain of hadiths. So that's all we have on Daniel. But as you can see, I've fallen in love with him because the cats loved him. You guys know I'm Umrera. Subhanallah, Allah. He had lions. The lions licked his cheek. Subhanallah, Allah. What a wonderful man he had to be. Subhanallah, Allah. What a beautiful story. And his body never deteriorated. And Umar, look at our beloved Umar. Umar knew what to do. He knew that if these people knew that this prophet was discovered, that the people would have worshipped him, that the people would have made a, a sacrilege of him. So that's why Umar told Abu Musa to bury him in a secret place. And by the way, there are also rumor uh, uh, hadiths that say not only did Abu Musa bury him, but he also had the, the slaves who buried him killed so that they wouldn't tell where he was. I don't know if that's true though, okay? But uh, mashallah, that's the story of Daniel. And he had a ring that he carved himself when he was in that pit so that he would never forget Allah's mercy of him sitting with two lions on either side, licking his cheeks. Can y'all imagine that? MashaAllah. All right. Next week, I'm going to do the story of Jeremiah because you guys know I've never heard of Jeremiah before either, but he's mentioned in these hadiths. So you know me, I will be bringing forth from the authentic hadiths what we can find about De Jeremiah as a prophet, alayhi salam. So I want to thank everybody for joining and participating in this session. Uh, also, guys, uh, please uh, support this Dawa effort. Uh, as I was saying earlier, we only have $140 in our account. And we have uh, website expenses to pay. Please, 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 guys, if you want to continue to hear these nice lectures and benefit from learning Islam and its truthfulness based on the Quran and the authentic Sunnah, please support us. We are not affiliated with any mosque. We're just a bunch of housewives and college students trying to keep the, the dawah straight. Please go to sunnahfollowers.net. Click on make a donation and donate today to help support us. All right. So I'm going to log out right now. I'll be back in at 11 for our Hadith class. Think about the lessons learned from Daniel, how Daniel never gave up on Allah. He kept his hope and Allah sent food to him and had the lions become his protectors, basically. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ila.